Welcome to Chapter 5 of Cats Spooky Chats. Today's chat is going to be about that uneasy and spooky feeling one gets in the wee hours of the morning. Ever wake up unexpectedly around 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning and things feel spooky or eerie around you? Maybe you've gotten up to use the bathroom around 3 or 4 a.m. and things seem a bit grim. Maybe you even feel as if someone or something is watching you or even following you. Well, depending on what you believe in, something probably is. Because you have awakened during the witching hour or the devil's hour, as some may say. Not familiar with the witching hour? Well, let me fill you in. And with that being said, let's chat. (laughs) When is the witching hour? Furthermore, what is the witching hour altogether? There are many different beliefs when it comes to the witching hour. But the origins of the witching hour are said to date all the way back to 1535. It is said that the witching hour originated from the Catholic Church, and the church forbade activities between 3 and 4 a.m. It is believed that Jesus was crucified at 3 o'clock p.m., and the reverse or opposite of 3 o'clock p.m. is 3 o'clock a.m., which is believed to be a time where demonic activity is at its highest. It is also said by some that the number three is a mockery of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The witching hour is said to be the time when the veil between life and death is thinnest. It's a time where spirits and ghosts travel between the two worlds. A time where witches, warlocks, demons, jinn, and devils are the most powerful. Many cultures disagree when it comes to the actual time of day the witching hour takes place. But they agree that it does take place. And when it does, evil is at its highest. Some even call it the devil's hour. Some believe the devil is an inversion or the opposite of Jesus. And since it is believed Jesus died at 3 o'clock p.m., 3 o'clock a.m. is said to be the devil's hour. The witching hour has even been discussed in scientific studies. There is much research surrounding the witching hour and its effects on the body if you're asleep during it. REM or REM sleep is said to occur when one sleeps during the witching hour. Now during this time, the body's temperature is lower The heart rate is slower. Breathing and blood pressure is irregular. Nightmares, night terrors, sleepwalking, homicidal sleepwalking, and sleep paralysis may occur. Symptoms of illnesses such as asthma, the flu, lung disease, and even the common cold may be worse during the witching hour according to some. And during the witching hour, you may wake up in sweats, you may wake up in chills, or even be awakened by coughing or wheezing. And if you have awakened, you may feel disoriented, agitated, or even afraid. And if you feel afraid, spooked, or uneasy when you're awakened during the witching hour, there are good reasons why. 
in chapters 1 through 4 of Cats Spooky Chats. I told you all about some of the things that can be lurking in the dark and creeping around during the witching hour. But today, let's chat about one more. The demon. The term demon is said to have derived from the Greek word daemon, which itself derived from the verb diaistai, which means to divide or distribute. The term daemon is said to be ancient Greek, and it's said to mean spirit or higher self. A demon or a daemon is known as a fallen angel or supernatural being with evil intentions. In the Hebrew Bible, there are two classes of demons. One class is the Searim. Searim are said to be beings Israelites offered sacrifices to in open fields. Some are said to be identical to Jinn, while others are said to be goat-like demons. The other class of demon in the Hebrew Bible is the Shedim, which is plural for demon. Shedim are known to be winged bulls associated with the wind. They were said to guard cities, houses, and temples, and could be gracious or evil creatures who enjoy human sacrifices. In the Jewish culture, they are more known as evil creatures. Some Jewish writings refer to them as storm demons. And there are three tales in Jewish culture when it comes to demons. One Jewish tale states that when God created the Shaddim, he did not create their bodies and he forgot about them on the Sabbath day when he rested. Now, the second Jewish tale describes Shadim as serpent-like creatures. And the third tale is that they are descendants of Adam and Lilith. Shadim are said to fly around graves or follow the dead. It was even said that sinful people would sacrifice their daughters to the Shadim demon but it is unknown if it was a life sacrifice or a sacrifice of a sexual nature. And one of the most interesting things about the demon relates to Christianity, according to some. It is said that the Bible speaks of angels and demons, but it does not speak about where demons come from. And the only thing that comes somewhat close in the Bible is in Revelations 12, verse 9. And it's in connection with Revelations 12, verses 4 through 6. But all of this was long after Adam and Eve and the mentioning of demons in the Bible. Now, ancient Jewish texts, such as the Dead Sea Scrolls, they refer to demons as disembodied spirits of dead Nephilim giants who perished at the time of the Great Flood. I mean, regardless of whatever your belief of demons are, just remember, aside from all the other things that go bump in the night and hide in the dark, demons are lurking around and they walk freely and are the most powerful during the witching hour. Now, the next time you wake up around 3 or 4 a.m. to pee, I bet your ass think twice before getting from under those covers, now won't you? And that little scare there marks the end of today's spooky chat. But beware, because there is much more to come. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.